Welcome to Podcast Across Worlds, where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. I'm your host, Lehilo Superfina, and today we have a very, very special guest, Mark Witten, who is a voice actor slash actor. You are familiar with him with the most recent title that has been hyped up a lot, Demon Slayer, Rengoku. Everybody loves him and other titles of games that we're super familiar with, like Genshin Impact, Fire Emblem, Three Houses, and others. Mark, welcome to my hey. podcast. Hi, Lua. <laughs> thank you so much for having me on. And uh, thank you for that beautiful introduction. I appreciate that. Yeah. Like, Mikael and I, we recently re-watched the movie of Demon Slayer. Oh, it hit us in the feels. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's a t that tearjerker every time, isn't it? <laughs> But before that, you've been working during this pandemic, and I've been noticing you've been doing things with social media. What has that been like? Um, it's been cool. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, pandemic kept us all indoors, um, but it's been really neat to do some virtual signings and ways to connect with fans virtually, uh, which has been really awesome. I I think I went to my first convention right before everything started. And so I was like, cool, I'm going to see people in person. And then, you know, everyone went on lockdown. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm going to see nobody for who knows how long. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, the virtual stuff was was actually very fun. Um, let's see. I missed it yesterday, but there, there, um, there's, uh, there's some actors from Genshin who get together to play Among Us. Um, and I played with them uh, the last time before, uh, but it was it's really fun. So everyone can kind of like get online on the discord and people are streaming and um, yeah, it's just a really good time. I think it's we're getting even more used to connecting online. So and, and there's some folks who already do it, but they're like, that's now the thing. Was that being streamed live on like Twitch or YouTube or was it just yeah. with you guys privately? It was actually multiple streams. So, um, gosh, let's see. Zach, Zach Aguilar, um, Tanjiro, he was uh, on and streaming that as well. So that was kind of fun. So he, he had his own stream. Um, Karina had their own stream going. Uh, Alejandro Saab had his own stream going. So you could view it through multiple lenses, if mm -hmm. you, it, depending on who was in the room. Or who's in the room at any time so uh yeah it's kind of fun and then we had just a general like open chat that was going on so yeah Ooh. yeah <laughs> i've only played among us once my first and last time mm -hmm. and i was bad at it at first but because it was my first time even though i was suspicious because I was like, oh, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> it kind of like <laughs> took the focus off of me. <laughs> nice, nice. You flew under the radar because they're like, she doesn't know what's going on. You, um, there's this one part where I was um, the, imposter, the imposter and I killed someone. And then someone else who was playing was like, why were you in that room? I saw you there. I was like, and they were asking, how come you didn't warn or was it called let people know that you found someone dead? You walked oh, right yeah, past them. It. Yeah, right. And I was like, oh, I, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was like, I forgot to be uh, Sorry. <laughs> when you're the new player playing the imposter and everyone has like long, lengthy explanations as to like, oh, well, I was in this room going down that hall and I was doing this task and it was this and this and the other thing. And I'm like. I, I couldn't explain my way out of a paper bag, um, you know, for many of these, but, but there are some, there's some amazing explanations. Oh, I remember um, in the game we were playing, uh, Core had this brilliant explanation of, of why someone was the imposter. And I, I can't remember the exact circumstances, but it was, it was amazing the way they explained it. It just, it was it was like a detailed account of the map and where different ducts led to. And I was just my jaw just continued to drop as I was like, oh, I am so toast if I ever <laughs> if I'm ever the imposter because I have no clue 
where to go. Just, uh, just no clue. Were they right? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent, a hundred percent right. <laughs> I was just dumbfounded. Uh, Dang. Uh, yeah, it was good. It was good times. Uh, a very formidable opponent right there. <laughs> so, you know, you sorry for like the, the coffee noises that are going to happen. What kind of coffee is it? It is. This is a, this is an a, Americano blonde espresso. Nonetheless, Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is going to become an ASMR podcast with with coffee ice. Uh, just oh, speaking <laughs> of coffee, <laughs> I know I'm going like off topic, but so Mikael and I, we've been trying to get things to energize ourselves after having a baby. Yes, I have a four month old baby, and we still do content and such. And so this we've is been your first time back in person. Yeah. <laughs> So we've been trying out different coffees and we found one that was advertised for gamers to stay up all late so you can game and have that energy and go through that raid, whatever it was advertised for. And okay. then we're like, okay, uh, let's try find something local in our grocery stores. <laughs> that way we say, don't you probably have the best coffees out there. <laughs> best flavor coffee, but is it caffeinated? So we found one that was called Death Wish. <laughs> Death Wish. Yeah, we found one that was called Death Wish. And um, oh boy, it, it works. We tried to find a substitute that was more affordable. And I was like, mm, it tasted better, but not close enough. You, you can, uh, yeah. <laughs> one cannot afford weak coffee. <laughs> like you must you must put your money into it so a death wish all right i'll uh i'll have to keep an eye out for that yeah it's a pricey one so we we try to use it if we really need it <laughs> <laughs> right so in, in case of emergency break break bag of death wish <laughs> yeah so i didn't realize the cast of Genshin Impact was that close to play with each other. Yeah. It, it's actually, it's been kind of wonderful. Um, they, they're, they're close and like they, they're really close. Um, there, there are a number of like discords that we've got going on and it's, it's pretty fun. Um, we just got together for like a little cast party in, in the park out here in Los Angeles. It was really wonderful to like see everyone because, you know, a, we're always so isolated anyways as voice actors inside these padded walls. <laughs> um, but then in addition to that, uh, you know, with the lockdown and everything, uh, it, it was like the first time for many folks getting out and seeing people, period. So it, it was just like an absolute joy to see to see everyone out there kind of like having fun and just a beautiful day in the park. So I'm amazed yeah. because normally cast members don't really see each other or interact like you guys normally you go in do your recording and get out you never mm -hmm. see each other <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not in each other's circles you don't interact as much so uh, i'm really impressed with this it, I, I think that it really depends on the game you know um and i i think uh I, I saw this a lot with fire emblem which i i feel i feel very lucky to have been in like two of these casts back to back because uh, Fire Emblem, uh, the folks in that are pretty pretty close as well. Um, but I think it's also like inspired by the fandom too. So the Genshin fandom is insane. If you haven't already uh, noticed this online, uh, you know, Twitter, TikTok, all all over the place, um, it's crazy. And it's a, it's a really fun game. I've been playing a lot. Um, and I think that just like there's so many elements that are just working all at the same time together. And because the fans are so excited about it, um, I think it's really served to draw the creative team together uh, in a way that doesn't always happen with every every uh, project that you're on. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just kind of like ongoing. The, the game lives, obviously, in the realm of the game, but it also lives online in memes and like little videos here and there in, you know, just fun interactions and fan art. That's, again, just amazing, blows my mind. Um, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of fan art, the character you voice, Rengoku, 
There's so much fan art of him on Instagram. Yeah. I was just amazed by it. Like, I didn't even see the movie yet. So I mm-hmm. didn't realize how much of a big brother type of character he was. But all the fan art of him, they always had him as a big brother. And everybody else were like little kids. And he's taking care of them. But the art was just beautiful. And <laughs> it just kept popping up in my feeds. Yeah. Yeah. He is a... Uh... He's a really like captivating character in in that series, um, which I I love Demon Slayer so much. Uh, It's it's funny how he stands out. And you're right, that that big brother, um, that sort of big brother role that he that he fills, which is something that is it's just another aspect of that hero's journey for Tanjiro that um, that is really easy to connect with that that sort of role model that you look up to and i guess you know you could say that to a certain extent of many of the hashira um but rengoku in particular kind of fills that uh <laughs> actually i love one of my favorite parts in the movie is when they're all calling him big bro and they're kind of floating around him in that weird dream sequence yeah! and he's just <laughs> like <laughs> just like laughing <laughs> And everyone's having like it's uh, it's so ridiculous and and random. I I just love it. But yeah, well, he's fan art out out the just out and everywhere. How did you get his role? Like, um, what was the journey of that? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Uh, I I got the role auditioning. Um, we uh, uh it was all all made with uh bang zoom uh entertainment uh bang zoom studios out here in hollywood is where uh is where well north hollywood uh is where we recorded and the role was it was actually a while ago and i auditioned for a number of hashira um rengoku uh amongst them and uh you know, like most auditions go, you get sides and you have some sort of reference generally. Um, and that was it. I, I just, uh, I had a, like I said, I, I, I went down the line of a number of Hashira. So it, you can imagine the auditions were pretty disparate uh, <laughs> in what they, in the attitude. But Rengoku um, really spoke to me. Uh, and, and I guess that since I'm, Actually, I was lucky enough to book it. Uh, it was uh, serendipitous. Mm. Um, and I, I good stroke of luck that uh, I ended up connecting with that one. Um, yeah, he's just, he's so, the, the audition copy that I did for him, uh, it was from the, the season, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so, he's so intense, uh, especially <laughs> when they're, you know, when they're judging, uh, when they're judging Nezco for the oh, first time. Oh, and, that was uh, intense. Yeah, it's he's so intense in that moment. And you you just he emanates this sense of justice and confidence. And um yeah, I just I really, I really loved it. I, I feel like I found a way to lock into it and um and luckily the clients thought so as well. And uh I'm I'm lucky enough to be be his voice. So for the other characters, you had like different personas, you spoke differently, you had different inflictions. Yeah. And you made one specifically for Rengoku. Yeah. I noticed in the movie that there is a lot of emotions going on. <laughs> and like he had he spoke differently in different scenes. And I was wondering, were you directed to um, display him to uh, voice him like that in those scenes or was that all you like you saw the scene you read the script and you're like okay he's gonna talk like this because in the beginning he's like super loud he's intense right and then like towards the end he gets like a little bit more brotherly and he takes that leadership role and then towards the end it's like that soft spoken where he's like it's my end it's like very somber sad and i'm like wondering were you directed to (laughs) talk like that yeah well um we are always directed uh in the booth which is is wonderful and always a boon to have someone uh to have people there who are kind of watching over your performance um a a lot of things go into especially uh, coming by the dub and and uh 
making the performance that was is true to the original performance rather so a lot of what we do as dub actors uh in anime is um to listen very carefully as carefully as we can to the original performance in japanese uh for the tone for for like broad strokes of of the character because mm -hmm. that is going to be obviously the japanese actors were already uh, directed, they're uh, probably doing this in an original animation sense, so recording it clean, mm -hmm. um, and really kind of tapping into what the character is from their point of view and from how it was set up in Japan is very important, even in the auditions. And that's why we'll receive like reference clips. So when you say, when you were asking, oh, did I do different voices for different Hashira? Uh -huh. um, I did, uh, but a lot of that is informed by what we see in reference clips from the already existing animation. And, and that gives us a, a really strong guide as to the vocal qualities of the character, but also the character, and more importantly, the character uh, themselves and kind of their their motivations their their characteristics their emotional journey as mm -hmm. much as we can discern it in in any of the scenes um and the, the funny thing about rengoku uh is that he goes through a much deeper emotional journey in the movie than yeah. he than he necessarily does in the series mm -hmm. we in the series, that. yeah we see him very lightly in the series and so what comes across is this very like kind of confident, almost militaristic sort of vibe. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and and so you need that that strength, that that confidence, that will. Um, when it came to the movie, I love characters that have uh, obviously everyone has more than one dimension mm -hmm. and i love finding that and seeing that. And so when I'm listening to, you know, when I'm reading through it, uh, beforehand, before recording, I obviously know that the character has a certain trajectory. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But more so when we're actually recording and I get to hear Mr. Hino's performance, Satoshi Hino, um, as he's performing in those moments, when we got to the scene where it's that flashback, uh, the dream sequence rather, not a flashback, uh, the dream sequence for Rengoku, um, he is in a very sort of it's it's immediately intimate and mm -hmm. and soft and it's like kind of like the bottom kind of drops out and and he gets very um contemplative uh you know soft but soft for rengoku um, right in the way in which he's kind of piecing through his history and so the more that i was able to listen into that and like sink into that space that was a beautiful guide uh, and all the while we have the director on hand and you know uh, uh there were there were folks from japan listening in who um who were actually you know making sure that we're staying on track thematically tonally um being true to the character in the situation as well so making fine adjustments within there um but really like one thing i i absolutely try to honor though is that original performance as much as we can um because mm -hmm. it's so important and uh and he did a fantastic job and so it's it's very fun to uh to follow that yeah this movie did so well all over the world <laughs> like there was did you feel there a lot of there's a lot of pressure on you because of that uh yes <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Oh my gosh, I can't even. Um, thank you for asking that. Because <laughs> I'm like, after that, a whole explanation. I'm like, oh my God, yes. it's like scrapping for air. <clears throat> um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, this one, I, I think I, I think my levels of understanding with like what I'd gotten myself into, um with demon slayer is it's it's its own sort of journey like initially when i knew about demon slayer i was like oh this is cool this is really cool and then when i got the uh, uh when i saw a couple of auditions come by because i think i actually also auditioned early on for some other characters in in demon mm -hmm. slayer um 
and then and then as I as I kept seeing some auditions come in, I was like, oh, I really want to be in this show. This looks really <laughs> this is really cool. <clears throat> and then the the Hashira uh, came up, and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I got to get myself into this show. All right, this is gonna be great. And so, but then the pressure started mounting. And then as I was like, as I got Rangoku and finally understood like what I got myself into, I was like, oh, oh, oh no. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> You're up there, man. You're up there. <laughs> I was like, am I gonna am I gonna be able to step up to the plate on this one? Um and then and then when I uh, like I didn't I still didn't really know where it was all going and uh mm -hmm. and i think it dawned on me when i started re recording for rengoku where i was like oh i've got some big shoes to fill mm -hmm. and then and but but like the series was you know recording the series was great because i didn't you know I, like i was like all right this is this is the we're wetting the appetite we're getting into the character we're we're just in the series there and i was like but i knew that i knew mugen train was on the horizon mm. and i was like oh my gosh what am I? <laughs> so I got, I got like super nervous. And then as it was, as it was kind of coming up, I was like, okay, okay. So yeah, I've been more nervous for this as far as a voice project um, than I have for probably any, any other, um, which is weird. I, I really, I really don't get stage fright, performance anxiety, anything like that. I've been fortunate enough to, to, to not have that happen. But with this one, there was, there was something about it where I was like, okay, this is big. <laughs> you did a phenomenal job. Like, oh, oh I heard every emotion in each scene. And I think I'm really happy for you for having such a big role in this movie. Like, it could have been part of the series and it could have been broken in different episodes but it's like one big movie and he has such a important part and uh, oh i cried it was so good <laughs> i was I know, so happy I, for you i was gonna say we were we were um my uh kelly and i my girlfriend we were watching it and and we were tearing up and i was like i know what happens <laughs> 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 like, I, know, I know what's going on <laughs> why am i tearing up <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, man you did such a great job like you. did your did, did your fandom did it increase after the movie like did you get more response from the audience through social media it it did uh um funny enough like i also got a lot of in addition to you know fandom increased on social media but my fa like there were a number of folks just that I knew along the way from doing other shows, from living in other cities, um, people that I just knew, uh, just friends in life who would, who would just reach out to me and they're, they're like, and, and it was a lot about, um, if they had teenage kids or if they worked with, with like young people or if they were just you know also fans themselves there were a mm -hmm. lot of friends just like calling me you know personally and and like leaving messages and, and just folks that were very excited in that way who reached out which doesn't always happen with a lot of other projects that i'm on mm -hmm. but this one um you know whether it was wide reaching enough or impactful enough uh that that folks actually started like you know texting me or emailing me or calling me and and that was really that was really fun to like connect with people on that and uh because I, I don't always reach my friends and family with the projects that i do because they're not always involved in um you know video games or certain animations uh um but with this one, they were, and that was really, that was really special and really fun. And there, there, were, there were some folks who, especially the ones that had like teenagers, uh, you know, people I'd worked with in the past and they're like, oh my God, my kids are, are, oh. are freaking out that I know you. And, <laughs> and I'm just like, that's, that's so cool. I'm like, uh, uh, tell them I say hello, uh, or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just super neat uh i love that this 
I, I just I can't get over how much like I I really appreciate that Demon Slayer has struck a chord with with people in the ex exact right way that it, the exact way it's intended to right it's this mm -hmm. wonderful sort of coming of age journey that uh that that it's, it's just executed brilliantly so do you know why they decided to make that specific arc into a movie instead of <clears throat> part of the series i don't know offhand because uh, to me i i, I often thought I draw a parallel with this one. Maybe this is a loose parallel to draw, but when, when they're on the mountain with Rui, um, mm -hmm. uh, that, that sort of story arc, I feel like that could have also been its own sort of movie. Uh, if you remember that where they're trapped in the mountain and all the spiders, uh, the, the mm -hmm. sort of spider themed demons um, are there. And that felt like almost a, a, a full complete film to me as well and that journey is is really one of my other favorite moments in the series um by the end with that uh, that fight uh where you know with nezuko and tanjiro and and that moment between them um <clears throat> so i don't know if if maybe i mean i if i were to venture a guess um maybe they thought that this would nicely bridge seasons and instead of kind of making it like, cause I guess I could also see this as like an opener to a second season, but in a way it definitely it, it, is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it would work, it would work well for that. Um, but my guess is, I don't know, maybe after making the first series, they're like, Hey, you remember that story on the mountain? <laughs> like, what if we, what if we just encapsulated that into kind of like a, a thing that's in between um in between greater arcs i don't know if you know this but like on funimation they mm. uh what's it called consolidated episodes and they have like an no. episode one two and three and it's literally a whole bunch of episodes put in like one to two hours <laughs> oh and do they and, do this with with multiple series no they don't normally do this so when i saw it and I saw only three episodes. I was like, three episodes? No, no, no. There's more than three. And uh -huh. then I looked how long they were. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So they're almost making their own mini movies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are. So when I saw the movie and I was like, okay, I can see why they made this into a movie because it's all in one train except for the last part. Right. And then um, I was also thinking, oh, maybe it's also because they want to put in, like, the budget into all these fight scenes because the animation. Oh, my God. It's so good. I know. Dang. Uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's so just, oh, it's eye candy. So fun to watch. My husband, Mikael, and I, we were thinking if this was in the movies, we would be like, feel like we're immersed in it. When <laughs> the flames come about, we'd be like, yes, burn me. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was that good. Okay. <laughs> that, that good. <laughs> but then when we saw the ending and how sad it was, we'd be like, oh, man, we'd be so mad if we saw this in theaters <laughs> because we'd be so sad. We would feel like there's a void in us. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then so you got on Demon Slayer and you got with Genshin Impact. Mm -hmm. Did you? When did you get the Genshin Impact role? Was it during Demon Slayer or after? That was that was after. Um, this was uh, this was at the beginning of this year, I think. Yeah, and sometimes it's it's difficult to remember what I auditioned for and when, because um, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that comes through. Um, but that was the beginning of this year. Uh, yeah, Genshin, uh, so much fun. Um, so much fun to work on. Although I, I had worked, uh, I'm also like, I, you can hear me uh, in, in random places around Tibet, uh, as well Whoa. as just other side characters. So I was, I was just, I was just random side characters before, uh, getting Kazuha. Um, 
but Kazuha came uh, at the uh, at the beginning of the year. <laughs> yeah. And what else have you been working on during oh, this whole time? Lots of stuff. Uh, it's actually been very busy, which has been great. I've been working on a lot of new things. Um, there's, uh, there's, uh, let's see what what came out recently. Because a lot of stuff that I'm working on currently, I I can't talk about until it comes out. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got some cool things that are coming out on the horizon that I'm excited to uh, be a part of. Um, I was in I was in a very fun film with uh, with a. Uh, the creator of Home Adventures with Tip and O made a beautiful that. movie that came out. Yeah, called Arlo the Alligator Boy. And uh, it's just it's just gorgeous. There's a lot of fun music in it, uh, a lot of wacky, uh, cool characters. And it's just a just a really positive, beautiful journey. Um, so definitely worth a watch if you can go out and check that out. And there is a TV series that is coming out called I Love Arlo on netflix so that's going to be out on august 27th oh so definitely check that out as well you may or may not hear familiar voices in it um so that's that's been a lot of fun um as far as other projects so i'm working on a lot of games i'm working on uh some animation as well um let's see i'm um, welcome to demon school iroma kun is in <gasps> season two so Yes, I like. Do you that like Welcome story. to Demon School? I do. <laughs> I love that show. I think it's so so ridiculous. It's hilarious because at first he he wanted to get out of there, and he's been put into situations, and for somehow he's turned out to be more powerful, and people are viewing him a certain way. When this whole time he's being scared that he's going to get eaten. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of conflicting emotions going on uh, for Irma. <laughs> uh, and then he like starts getting to know these demons, build these relationships, and like these other characters, they actually have like a deeper story behind them. So yeah, it's so like good, it. it's so good. I I I don't know if you, I don't know. I, I play a lot of weird characters in it. <clears throat> I play uh, Kamui, the the uh, the licentious bird. Uh, oh. in, in the Misfits class. <laughs> so, so right from Rengoku to uh, to the <clears throat> to the sort of uh, lechy pervy bird. He is quite <laughs> a character. He he definitely <laughs> is. Uh, yeah, he's he's quite a guy. I I have so much fun. The reference lines that we have for Kamui are <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> It's it's the first one. It's the ladies may I fly by your side, and then the other one is is him getting a foot shoved in his face, and he's like, "Your feet are 20... Oh God, what's the measurement? I can't even remember it now. <laughs> but I get to say that every time that I go in to record, and I love it. Let's see, I play a lot of uh, alarm clocks in that one, and and weird demon birds. I, I guess there's only one alarm clock. I play Yerma's alarm clock. <laughs> And uh, what's another fun character? Oh, Cum Cum. Another weird character. He's the little <laughs> shop owner. The angry shop owner. So, yeah, I love popping up in a lot of weird places in, in that, that anime. That's so much fun. And season two has been a joy to work on as well. Um, let's see. What else am I, uh, am I working on? Um, I, I was working on Beyblade throughout the pandemic, which was a lot of fun if you're into Beyblade. Whoa, um, Beyblade! Yeah, is it like a like just a whole new series or like a reboot? I I remember that when I was younger, <laughs> and then all the kids were buying the Beyblades, mm -hmm. and <laughs> it's been going on for a bit. This is Beyblade, uh, Beyblade Burst. I want to say uh, I play Silas Carlisle in this one, um, and he's a fun character too. Just really like really edgy and and arrogant and uh and i just i i love <laughs> i love voicing him as well he's he's very <laughs> fun he's very brash and and uh he's he's a braggart but poor silas <laughs> keeps getting beaten left and right and i'm just like i want you to win man <laughs> <laughs> But he never loses spirit. Like he he always is just like confidence 
just for days. Um, so that's a, it's always fun to like, you know, to get into that, that mode. I really like how you talk about your characters. It's like you, you have a deep connection with them and no matter what type of personality they are, you view them in such a good light. <laughs> you gotta find that. Yeah. I mean, even when you're playing, I don't know. I, I, I know there might be some contention behind it, but I think even no matter who you're playing as an actor, I always like to, to look at like them at, from, from the inside out, you know, instead of mm -hmm. like, cause there's so many ways you can view a character being like, no, oh, they're just like Kamui. Like you just be like, nah, he's just a pervy bird, you know? And, and you just pass judgment on him. And so it's mm -hmm. a little bit difficult to play someone when you're just passing judgment on them. So you kind of have to be like, and also you don't want to just be like, I don't want to just be the, the perviness comes from somewhere. Like, right, right. Well, not to, not to like go down too much of a treacherous path. Um, to, to be honest, I do not approve. And to be very clear, I do not approve of Kamui's actions. <laughs> but in order to play him, I have to try to understand the the character and where it comes from and i think that you know in welcome to demon school they are uh, uh, you know let's not go down the treacherous road of that but i do think mm -hmm. the characters mm -hmm. that characters do merit understanding and it doesn't just come out of nowhere right and i think that when it comes out of nowhere in the performance it seems a little weird but when it when you try to like understand a little bit of where it does come from and maybe it's just like kamui can't catch a break <laughs> like he's <laughs> he's he's pervy sure but he, maybe he's just a big misguided uh doof and this is the way it's presenting itself and and he needs you know he's he seems to he like he would not be terribly lucky in love either <laughs> and hopefully someone will come in and like crack him on on the side of the head one of these days um, I'm pretty hopefully. sure he does have a story because each of the characters in the Misfit class does have a story, like the yeah. reason, like why they are who they are, right? Then, right then and there, <clears throat> right. And I think that makes him. I think that makes a character interesting, right? Otherwise, mm -hmm. he's just. Otherwise, he's just a write off. And right. I don't think. I don't think anyone's a write off. Um, you know, there's there's always there's always a reason, and maybe it doesn't always get explored. But that doesn't mean that I can't explore it and that I can't have the reason behind it. I think for you as the person voicing the character, you need to explore it. Like you need yeah. to find the reasons for these actions. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> and you're like, okay, how do I voice this? <laughs> Why are yeah. they like this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's I mean, that's part of the fun, honestly, for me is like you know, just asking those questions. That's that's uh, that's the fun work to do. So, yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. let's see what else am I working on these days? Oh, um, if, if you don't mind me switching uh, track here to uh, I make a podcast. I make two podcasts, actually. Oh, um, yes, but I they, remember you talking about that. Yeah. Tell us, all, tell us. They're all performance-based podcasts. So uh, one is sci-fi. It's a lot of sci-fi stories, um, radio plays and whatnot. Um, we do it in the style of old-timey radio plays, but it is very much like a modern take. So uh, it's like watching animation without the animation, but I try to bring in a lot of it. I do a lot of sound engineering with it. And so I try Ooh. to create soundscapes that are engaging uh, where you can imagine like the starship battles or the halls that they're, you know, the steam filled planky halls that they're running down. Uh, try to create that sense of tension um, in the situations or comedy if we need it. Um, so that's been a lot of fun and I've worked with a lot of cool people on that. Uh, Folks who are fans of voice actors will notice some some people in the show, I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's been a blast to work on those. And the one that we've been working on the most uh, during the pandemic has been called The Hotel. And that is our horror podcast. And oh. yeah. so we've got our sci fi and then we got our horror podcast as well. And I play a delightful character called The Lobby Boy. And he is just a very drab, um, uh, pitiful sort of like trapped, tortured soul. Um, 
and I just I love voicing this character. My friend Travis writes all of the all of the series, both series. And he's just written some really cool, poetic, uh, sort of moody horror. Um, mm. And initially it was just like the, the premise is there's there's this crazy haunted hotel uh, it takes on many shapes and many forms and guests check in and they die a horrible and fantastic death. Oh. Um, all while being assisted by this macabre staff. And it's these <laughs> monologues from the staff's point of view. But as the seasons go on, uh, the nature of the hotel kind of changes and reveals itself. And it becomes a little bit of like a, a sort of an Ouroboros sort of story. Um, oh. Yeah, it's super cool. I, I love working on it. Um, I get to like draw on a lot of things when I'm sound engineering. Um, one of my favorite things about this, uh, I'll go off on a little tangent. Uh, there's uh, constructing the hotel's uh, voice as well. Um, if anyone out there is an what? old style gamer and has has played um, System Shock, <clears throat> uh, then they might remember a character by the name of Shodan or uh, characters called the Many. And I I'm like digging back into my past for audio ideas on how to construct <laughs> voices and and uh, you know what effects and how to like kind of time time phrases out. So. We have a lot of fun with it. I think our, our third season really struck a note, uh, struck a chord with our audience. And we've had some brilliant fan art. If you search oh. the hotel podcast hashtag, there's a lot of really great fan art on Twitter and on Instagram. So, Are, yeah. Is this fan art based off their imagination or what you guys yeah. displayed for them? Yeah, we haven't well, we haven't done any visuals associated with it. So one one thing that I <clears throat> oh my gosh, sorry, coffee. Oh, me apparently. Too. <laughs> me too. Uh, me too. Are you are you okay? Oh, <laughs> um yeah, so one of the cool things about uh this is that we don't have any visuals to accompany it. So this is completely out of the fans' imaginations of of what we're doing. Oh and wow! I love, love, love seeing what people come up with, um, and what because I don't know. I, I'm not entirely sure what it looks like, <laughs> and and I love when when other people who have that sort of visual artist's talent, uh, you know, put their pen to paper and really make it come to life, and and we get to see what it looks like in the minds of everybody else. Um. Yeah, it's that's so amazing. Cool. <laughs> like something that you guys have made an idea of, and you have to create this type of imagery for people's minds, and mm -hmm. someone else just put it on paper for you. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. I. I mean, seeing stuff like that really makes me want to get it animated or get it into like graphic novel form mm. or like, you know, there, there's so many possibilities I feel like, and, and I, I love creating stories and creating shows. And so like one of my hopes and dreams for stuff uh, like this that I'm doing is that, you know, maybe down the line, there is a collaboration that's possible uh, with, with uh, artists, with producers uh, and a way to, to get this realized even, even more than just the podcast. I like how you guys are like thinking about going beyond just podcasts. Like you have bigger plans or big goals. dreams, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. Um, yeah. I love having a, having a goal to shoot for. So how do you have time to do all this? <laughs> you, you take a lot of jobs, roles, you have these podcasts and, um, you have a life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, I know um, through social media, you and your girlfriend, you guys exercise. You are, you guys are healthy. Like, yeah. <laughs> yep. Every, every day. Well, most every day. Um, yeah. Actually, it's, it's funny. That was a, a nice byproduct of the pandemic was like a really regular workout schedule. Um, more, I mean, I've always had a regular workout schedule, but like mm -hmm. more so. And then when she got involved in physical training and, and, uh, uh, nutritional coaching, mm -hmm. um, it was really nice to like, kind of pay some, some, uh, 
particular attention to that. Um, I love it. I, I, I kind of, I, I love that, uh, I've been able to spend my time on that. I, I really enjoy working out and being active. I enjoy it when we, we actually were just on a, on a trip where we got to go hiking, uh, a lot in the Rockies and, um, Ooh. yeah, oh, it's so beautiful up there. Um, but you know, doing these hikes and like kind of, uh, just being out there and, and it not killing us, <laughs> you know, to, <laughs> <laughs> to go on to to be at elevation to be walking for miles and miles to be you know uh, climbing and, and it's just easy it's it's not like it's not like oh do you think we can make it it's like yeah where do you want to go today and i just i kind of mm-hmm. love like trying to keep ourselves into shape not so that i can necessarily even like look good but but so that i can do stuff <laughs> You know, you know, and I mean, not that looking, not that looking the way you want to look or, or attaining that is a bad goal either. I think that that's a fine thing, uh, too. Um, you know, it's, it's whatever speaks to people, but, uh, part of that, part of keeping in good shape that speaks to me is that I just like going out and doing stuff and not having to worry about whether I can or can't. So I think that, uh, that's a nice aspect of it as well. I can definitely so relate to that. Places. <laughs> oh, and, um, the hiking by you! Oh my gosh, Diamond Head, Coco mm-hmm. Head, <laughs> so beautiful. Oh, so when you're talking about how when you're hiking, you don't want to be. Oh, can we make it? Like <laughs> when I first took my husband to Coco Head, oh, it was it was like one of his first hikes too. <laughs> you took him there for his first hike. Yeah, I, I thought he could handle it. <laughs> okay, everybody listening, go go look up. Well, get to a place if you're on the road. Don't do this, but you know, look up Coco Head, and just like as a first hike, it's short, but it's like up, it's up, and and on those like those railroad steps, those railroad um uh, beams or whatever. I don't have the right terminology. Yeah, it used to be railroads, and yeah. it's, it's super steep. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, that's like, even at the distance that it is, that's, that's just a lot to tackle. <laughs> Let me defend myself, though. We were in the area and we were planning to hike mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, let's do Coco Head. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mikhail, Mikhail, you were smart. <laughs> oh, man, she was so mad at me. She was so mad. <laughs> did you, did you get to the top? We got to the top. Oh yeah, nice. we did. Oh, and we looked Come at hell or high water. We we're like, we took a lot of pictures, and then we looked down. We're like, oh dear. <laughs> you can't. That's when you wish that the the paragliders or the wings were a thing, and you're like, let me just jump. <laughs> yes. Oh man! And then so there's this part where the rails. It's kind of. It's not very stable looking. It's literally just the rails. And you could either walk on those individual, what's it called when they're parallel to each other? Know, <clears throat> Not the vertical um, part, the parallel, I mean, the, the horizontal the, parts. Yeah, the boardy boops, the whatever. Well, We're going to call them something now. It's You could walk on those and keep your balance, make sure your core is great, or you could just walk around it. <laughs> there's, there's a man-made trail to walk around it. I took that part, <laughs> so it didn't nice. so. Nice. Uh, but then we saw this woman holding a baby, just totally walking on that, balancing while holding a baby. And at that time, I'm thinking, oh, dear. Wow, you go, girl. <laughs> but now, as a mother, I'm thinking, oh, heck no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> if I ever heard someone do that to my kid, oh, no. That is that is a confident mama right there, though. Jeez, if she's just walking. Is... <laughs> right, while talking to, talking, looking to the side of her, talking to someone. I'm like, dang. I don't know. Oh. You mothers are pretty strong. I'm pretty sure you got to... <laughs> You got like a, don't you, don't you just multitask better now that you're a mom? Like, well, the thing is that your superpower now that you have, like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you level up once, once you have a child, you now have unlocked the multitasking talent. We do unlock things. Like, especially <laughs> for me, I used to, um, I used to get tired a lot mm. and 
I would need, I would require a lot of sleep, especially when I was pregnant. But now that I've had a baby that conditioned me to wake up every three hours, <laughs> I've been able to retain energy from the short amount of sleep I get. <laughs> Oh my god, you're adapting. Mm -hmm. you, you now can like conserve and you can start like getting a stockpile. You've got rollover energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the part where you said um, exercising so you can be able to do things uh, effortlessly to enjoy that moment, it resonated with me because right now I have like a, a pain in my hip area because I mm -hmm. gave birth. So I'm now taking physical therapy. And my motivation is so I can pick up my baby, so I can move around with my baby without being like, ow, 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 or be like, <laughs> Mikael, I can't do anything. It hurts too much. Yeah, I want to be able to do things with her. I love that. That that motivation, like, right there, that's perfect. I mean, I don't want to, like, get on too much of a, a, a weird tangent with the, <laughs> with, with the working out and everything. But I, I think that a, a lot of things that sometimes, like, sh make people shy away from it is, like, just consistency or having, like, a clear goal. And your goal mm -hmm. doesn't have to be, like, lift 2,000 pounds. Your goal can be just, like, I want to hold my baby and not have it wear me out or, or have me in pain. And I think that that goal is as clear and important, if not more so, than just picking a number uh, uh, to, to be able to lift. Um, but honestly, it's like mm -hmm. what motivates you. And, and I think that there is, there is nothing wrong. And in fact, everything right with that being a goal, you know, and if that motivates you to, to go out there and, and do the thing, then, then that's perfect. Just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and then because we're on the subject of exercising and sometimes you have to like have like a breathing rhythm, mm -hmm. What did you think about the breathing techniques in Demon Slayer? <laughs> um, I would be <laughs> lying to you if I didn't tell you that, like, I I, I sometimes try to, like, uh, I sometimes do that. <sighs> you know, I, mm -hmm. I totally do that. I totally visualize that when I'm lifting weights, too. Like, it's it's. It's a little nerdy, but like, uh, but I don't care because I freaking love it. And, and it's something that honestly, like that speaks to me and yeah, I try some breathing techniques. I'm probably not getting them right, but you know, I, I haven't, uh, I haven't, I haven't had any like fire coming out of my hands yet or like any, <laughs> my sword skills haven't improved all that much. Um, <laughs> but I love that stuff. Oh my gosh. Like. I can't, I almost can't help myself when I, when I see them doing it and like sitting there and meditating and, uh, you know, Tanjiro on the roof, like kind of just trying to control his breathing or when I'm mm -hmm. sleeping, like I'd be, I'd be super lying to you if I, if I told you that I didn't also try to do some of that. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I think it's fun. I, I, I just, I want to try it on. Maybe that's also like me as an actor. Um, I, I get that way with a lot of things, a lot of parts, a lot of, um, emotions. Like if I, if I see someone in a movie or in TV or even in life doing a thing, I, I want to like mimic it. I want to imitate it. Cause I want to mm -hmm. see like, what does that feel like? What, mm -hmm. what is, what's, what is doing that due to my body, to my mind? Um, and that stuff just really interests me. So yeah, <laughs> cool. when try I some breathing. <laughs> When I first saw Demon Slayer and um, they introduced the breathing techniques, I thought it was pretty accurate <clears throat> with how people are exercising or perform mm -hmm. and such. Because I remember when I had friends who did track running and such, they told me that the breathing was really important for them because it helped with their rhythm. And it helped with them not think so much that they're out of breath and such. <clears throat> Yeah. And so when I saw it in Demon Slayer, I was like, man, that's so accurate. <laughs> it's important. Yeah. It's <laughs> and when important. and when people are doing martial arts and such, you have to like breathe in, breathe out at certain motions. Cause if you don't, it, it doesn't work out. It, it's not perfect. It's not complete. Mm -hmm. It's that mind body connection, really like being able to focus 
Because if you're like heaving and everything, and mm-hmm. <laughs> like when, when Rengoku is like, focus, <laughs> you know, puts his finger right onto Tanjiro's head, and he's like, nope, boop. Uh, and it's, um, yeah, yeah, it's totally like uh, that's that's like that a very athletic thing, I think, to to be able to have some sort of control uh, over over how you how you breathe and how your body just exists in space. And yeah, especially during those strenuous times. Do you do yoga? I do. I do a lot of yoga and I love that. I don't do yoga, oh, but with, <laughs> with my physical therapy, I feel like I'm doing yoga. Mm-hmm. Like there's this one move, one exercise, not move, exercise. <clears throat> I think it's called like a cat. Mm-hmm. That one where like I have to arch my back and then yeah. like, arch opposite way. <clears throat> cat cow. I, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I have to like squeeze my butt muscles and squeeze my core <laughs> at the same time. <clears throat> yeah. That, that, that felt like yoga. And after learning all these different exercises, I was thinking, huh, I could do this in the morning. These feel like yoga, a lot like yoga. <laughs> And now I know why people are doing yoga and such because I see it and uh, I've done it once upon a time. And I was just instructed to do the motions. I didn't realize Mm -hmm. how important it was to tighten your buttocks and your (laughs) abdomen. It makes a huge difference. It does. It does. Controlling that core, controlling all that. That even just walking, standing, uh, my physical therapist tells me, whatever I do, like picking up a remote, squeeze your core. I'm like, okay, (laughs) it works. I haven't haven't taken it it that far, but uh, I will tonight. (laughs) Don't, you've set me down the path. I'm going to be like, hold the core, grab remote, use Mm -hmm. your, twist your hips to get that remote back to you. (laughs) (laughs) But how long have you been doing yoga? I've been doing it for years, uh, a, a long, long, long time. Um, probably, probably 10 years now, um, on and off t- to different extents. Yeah. Um, it's, it's fun. I've had a lot of different, uh, different teachers and, and, uh, throughout the years, one of my favorite teachers. Um, so, uh, slight side note when we were in New York city, uh, or when I was living out there, um, had a teacher, and we were at, we, she was actually teaching at a gym, but she was from the Jiva Mukti school, um, which was funny that she was teaching at Gold's gym, but she was brilliant. Uh, and we're all sitting there and we're doing, we're doing yoga. We're doing, we're holding these like, you know, hard poses. And she would just walk around and she'd be like, all right, y'all look very constipated right now. So like, <laughs> she's like, smile, laugh, breathe. And it's so funny because when you're, when you're holding like, you're holding these poses. Sometimes you forget to breathe because you're like squeezing everything and you're like, mm-hmm. and she would just say something to like uh, to something like that. And everyone would start laughing in it. And she's like, there you go. Also bring that into it. <laughs> Hold that pose, but like breathe. It's probably going to be uncomfortable a little bit, but it's going to get a lot easier when you like, when you actually start connecting your breath to it and not like tightening your face up. <laughs> it was just so funny because we were like, we're immediately we're like, yeah, yeah, we do. It totally <laughs> looked like that. <laughs> but again, the breathing is important, which makes why Demon Slayer was so accurate. That's okay? right. Demon Slayer is out there to just teach us how to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> what is your what is your breathing form, Lihua? Oh, I I resonate with the water one, not just because that was the first one I saw. <laughs> I resonate with the water because when I was thinking about the breathing and the water, I was thinking about breathing in, breathing in oxygen transport the oxygen throughout my blood and I was thinking about my blood as the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good visualizations there. I love that. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, and you've got the ocean so close. You know, you grew up in Hawaii, so the ocean is a big part of your life. Mhm. But I did like the 
Oh, I feel bad not remembering. Is the correct term thunder or electricity? Um, the boy in yellow. <laughs> Is any two, yeah. <laughs> thunder. I really like his. It looks really Is cool. Now, no, gosh, now I'm, hold on to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Zen this is really cool, but I think I only like it because it's always looking flashy whenever I saw it. Mm -hmm. But I do like how the water's flowy and it looks beautiful, yet it's deadly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love Zenitsu and one form. Just <laughs> one form. <laughs> It's such a weird character. Uh, good times. Yeah. Man, we talked about a lot of stuff. We even went off topic. Yeah, we've gone very off. We've, we've gone off topic in a number of ways. Um, but I, I like it. I like it. Just go wherever it leads. Like mm -hmm. the water. Like the water breathing. Mine is, I always kind of joke that I'm like, I'm coffee breathing. Coffee? <laughs> With many forms. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm trying to make up different techniques for everything like you know <clears throat> blonde americano would be i don't know one of the, i don't know if that's the first form or <laughs> <laughs> let's just go through my entire menu the second form hazelnut cold brew <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of possibilities with coffee breathing there's and so it's kind options. of connected to water it's like it between, is. The, between the water and the land, you know. <laughs> the water transport the caffeine. That way it gets absorbed into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And then it gets to your brain, caffeinate you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm a big proponent. I know that that's probably going to be like, uh, I'm, I'm hoping for a spinoff. <laughs> Coffee breathing somewhere in there. <laughs> Well, <laughs> in Demon Slayer, they did say there's different forms that branch off from the main mm -hmm. elements, right? <laughs> yep, absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, there's the insect Hashira. There can be the coffee Hashira. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Watch when your fans are going to make a, a coffee Hashira. <laughs> coffee Hashira. I, yeah. Let's work on this. We'll make some fanfic. <laughs> it, it, this is this is ripe for it. It can be all like the the modern day the modern day Hashira. You have like a just all the things we see around. You have like the the car Hashira or something like you have you have the uh, the internet Hashira. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> that people would do that. Oh, I f that just reminded me of an anime I saw recently where it was making fun of everything was a power. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't, it was not my hero academia. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> something. Yeah. It was something else, but it was, it, it seemed like a satire, but mm -hmm. it worked. <laughs> I need to look it up. And then once I find that title, I'll let you know what it was. I like it. I like it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, there's so many, so many good animes out there. Hopefully, even more to come. That I mean, so, <laughs> and then we can talk about more anime. Are there any that you want to get involved with? Oh, um, it's not, it's not anime, but well, it's not really anime. But I would love to be involved with the Persona series at some point in time. I think that would be a lot of fun. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So one of these days, that's that's on a wish list. Um. Let's see. Um, oh, I was very. I liked. I like Attack on Titan, but that is, you know, very, very much over. Um, so, but yeah. unless they do something, uh, something later on. Um, let's see uh, if they ever reboot Bubblegum Crisis, which was one of my favorite animes from back in the day. But then, that's. Uh, I don't know if there's really a part for me in Bubblegum Crisis. <laughs> 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 but I totally watched the reboot, so um, I'll have to think on that. I'll, I'll get back to you with a couple of uh, a couple of them that I that I hope to to be in. Mm -hmm. What well, the Persona one kind of surprised me. How long have you been interested <clears throat> in that? Oh, I, I mean, I've actually I've auditioned for it a, a lot, oh! <laughs> not a lot, but like a couple of times. 
Um, I just haven't been uh, lucky enough to land a role yet. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, I find it to be kind of fun and flashy. I, I maybe it's also because like I want to do a project with my friends, <laughs> and so I'm like, oh. all my friends are in it. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was because there's layers to Persona because, like, on the outside, like, the way they portray it, especially with Persona 5, they may seem like it's, like, upbeat, happy, kiss, but then mm -hmm. there's actually, like, darkness behind that. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, yes. I there's, mean, like, so many layers. I, I, love, I, love, I love the layers to anything. So, I mean, like, yeah, seeing, you know, knowing, knowing the content of Persona, it's like, oh, this would be a perfect fit. Just mm -hmm. got to find the right, the right way to get myself into it. Um, which, you know, that's not up to me. <laughs> it's, Cast you know, we, we take our shots. You. Cast yeah. fingers. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I, I, I feel, I feel lucky to be in what I'm in and, you know, lucky for grateful for the opportunities to come. And that's, that's all I can really do. I just take them one at a time and, and, uh, and to get to be in the projects that I get to be in. <laughs> Well, you've been in a lot of great projects yeah. uh, during this pandemic and such. And um, you have such a big fan base after these animes, these games and such. Like, what do you... So, you've done in-person conventions, meeting fans and such. So you've done, like, the virtual kind. Actually, only did one in-person convention, but I'm going to be doing a bunch more. Oh yeah, yeah, guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, they're they're kicking off. I'm actually going to uh Dallas uh on the 13th of this month. We'll oh. be the first one at Weebcon 2021. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. And then PoochieCon right after that over in Atlantic City uh at the end of the month. So that'll be fun too. Have you ever had fans uh telling you what they wish you were in like they pictured you as a certain character and such oh um that is a good question you probably uh, had a lot <laughs> <laughs> uh, not as not one? as many as you might not as many as you might think actually um and and sometimes it's it's hard to find the discussions necessarily without like going and looking for them um, mm -hmm. I'm always looking, I'm always doing a lot of like research or reading or so many other things. I don't always find my way onto the like threads like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I know that uh, one, one thing where it may appear is that whenever there's speculation about who voiced a character that's coming up, there can be a lot of, uh, there can be a lot of guesses that are made as to like, who's doing that. And I think that that's sometimes where, where you might see some of, uh, those, those things happening with the fans where they're like, oh, this totally sounds like that person, or I bet it's going to be, uh, like Dreamcast, it's going to be that person. I don't know if I factor into or how many people's Dreamcasts I factor into. Um, <laughs> thank you to anyone who puts me in a Dreamcast of anything. I really appreciate that. I appreciate that you would think of me in that in that light. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess I, I would be curious uh, to know to know where where people might might place me. But um, I don't know. I try to <laughs> I haven't had as much like uh, come my way as, as in people like theorizing or, or telling me that you should be this or that. Mm. Which makes sense because if they know who voiced that character, they're like, okay, that was them. I'm good. They did very well. Don't right. change it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's another thing too. Is that with a lot of a lot of projects, it's like, you know, there are there are fantastic actors out there tackling so many uh, of the roles. Um, it's it's funny. There there's some roles that um, that actually have a lot of diversity behind them like iconic characters um especially like uh looney tune characters uh, uh as as one example but there are many different people who over the years have voiced different looney tune characters and that's kind of fun to like see the voice comparisons and to see everyone spin on a on a very famous or popular character um mm -hmm. so i find those things to be fun where you get to like kind of compare like oh what did they do for this iteration of it and oh what did this person bring to the role um okay yes that is interesting <laughs> that is uh mikhail did that 
once, uh, not not once, actually multiple times with, <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with the title, Ronin Kenshin, because there were no. different, so Ronin Kenshin is about a uh, manslayer samurai, and uh, he used to be like an assassin during a warring period, but mm-hmm. after that was done, and he went through a lot of a lot of stuff, and he's like, I don't want to fight anymore. He's very peaceful. So Mikael loves this series. And I believe there have been two different voice actors. One, you just have to take it because it was the first one. Mm-hmm. You had no other comparison. The second one did it better. <laughs> 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 um, but the first one also says some lines much better uh, in I don't know how to explain it, but he's always comparing it to me. And I'm like, oh, that's actually really interesting. Do you think it's because of the script or because of the resources at the time? Or it was just really interesting because I would not have heard a difference unless he pointed it out to me. Hmm. Interesting. Is that, I mean, there, there, uh, that brings a lot of thoughts to mind because there are some projects where uh, obviously when they were making games uh, a while ago, um, they didn't always have like the budgets uh, that they do today or necessarily even the attention on them that they do today. Mm -hmm. And so, so sometimes um, who they selected didn't necessarily go through the process that we have in place today. Um, uh, Like, like large casting agencies with a lot of eyes on it, a lot of producers and a lot of, uh, you know, money behind it. Um, Mm -hmm. um, Which, and and this is obvi- not to speak ill of either way of doing it because there there are a lot of performances in old games that I very much like, um, and there are some where you you think like well maybe they just got some of the devs to do it because at the time the devs were the ones making the games mm-hmm. and they didn't you know you didn't have you didn't go and hire a composer all the time you didn't go and hire voice actors all the time because you know when it was really early on that just wasn't that was wasn't a consideration as much you know it was the 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 developers who were first making them and they kind of contributed all the components on their own um Mm -hmm. but then you build up this sort of like there are certain performances that or or deliveries that become iconic and those things are like, oh my gosh, they 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 say it in this certain way, or or this line is like you said, written in a certain way, and that mm-hmm. kind of keeps through to uh, to other iterations of a project um, because it is iconic of that series, or the way in which they delivered it is is um, is unique, uh, and they want to preserve that and as as like kind of um, as a like that fan callback. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I I, uh, I don't know. That's <laughs> I think I've spun myself off onto my own tangent. No, I think you're right, especially with the uh, the budgeting and the casting, how much eyes are on it. Because I knew with Ronan Kenshin, the first version, there weren't that much people uh, going for roles. Like there, there wasn't that much competition <laughs> for mm-hmm. voice actors and such. It's whoever they can get. But now y'all have a lot of competition. (laughs) (laughs) There is a lot of competition. There's also like a a way in which you can you can seek out people in in like specific areas too, depending on where the game's made. Uh, You might be getting actors from just that local region and people that you know. And it's it's not like you're not getting actors. You just might not be getting like Los Angeles or New York or like Tokyo, or you just might not be getting those actors. Mm -hmm. But you still might be getting actors because they're actors everywhere. You know, there's theater everywhere. There's there's small production that happens. And there are plenty of good actors out there who don't necessarily live in L.A. Um, Mm. uh, I think that a lot of them do. And I would say even the majority of them do live in these large cities and hubs. But that's not to say that you can't find really brilliant performers out anywhere uh, in the world who, you know, they have a passion for performance and it really comes through. Um, 
and uh, or maybe someone who hasn't even been a performer, but they have like a latent passion for performance and they just get involved in it uh, through one way or another. Generally, that happens in like the indie games and in, uh, you know, uh, smaller projects where you'll find some of these unique castings. Um, and I think that's great because I think it keeps it keeps everyone on their toes. Um, it, it introduces this diversity uh, into in into the entire medium. And I think that that's just it's only helping to give more dimension and more possibility to what we experience in games. So I really love and appreciate that. Plus, I'm a sucker for old games, too. So I like there's some, I'm the guy who like those those iconic lines and performances. I'm like, let me hear them because I love them. And <laughs> You're going to have people doing that for you now. <laughs> <laughs> I only hope that I can inspire the next thing. The next thing. We keep on growing. Hey, so I do have a few questions left. And Let's do it's it. Going it's going back to Demon Slayer. I'm I am really curious about that virtual uh, meetup thing you did. Mm, mm -hmm. So, how did that work? Did people like chat with you, or you? Did oh, you mean Color World? <clears throat> yeah. How did yeah. that work? Uh, Color World is just it's a way to do a virtual meet and greets and hangouts, and uh, so we we actually just meet, kind of like you and I are meeting right now, oh, like this. Yeah, like this. Oh, mm -hmm. like one chat. on one, or yeah, was one it on like one. a group of people? No, just one on one. Wow! So, yeah. Whoa! Wow! It's really fun. It's. I mean, we did a panel as well that was uh, that was streamed um, through Streamyard and online um, to a, a a number of. It was broadcast out. Um, mm -hmm. But for, for the meetups and meet and greets, it was just like one on one. And it's really fun. It's it's like uh, it's it's like having that personal experience at a con, except you don't have like a line of people uh, mm -hmm. that's that's there, and and you just kind of get to chat and talk about whatever. We talked about we talked about shows. We'd talk about games. We'd talk about life. We'd talk about uh, you know, just kind of whatever whatever folks were curious about. And it's it's fun to see what people are curious about and what speaks to them. You know, some people um, would relate stories where they're deeply affected by uh, by certain games or certain parts in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and and others, we'd just kind of talk about like fandom and we'd talk about uh, things that that they're interested in or I'm interested in and and just kind of what like motivates us day to day. And it just yeah, it's just that it's just a hangout. It's, so it's a lot of fun personal it sounds mm -hmm. more personal than at a convention because you're aware there's people behind you yeah <laughs> in this line wow <laughs> that's right. so nice it, it's a really nice alternative because i i think that conventions are great too i think it's great to be able to meet someone you know face to face and i can't wait to do more of that to have someone like physically there um but to do this, you're right. It, there's that. There's uh, there's an intimacy to it. Uh, there's uh, there's the pressure relieved from it, and it's a it's kind of an an interesting alternative that I think suits some folks maybe even better than going to a convention, um, you know. And and you still get to have that sort of experience and that that FaceTime, and we get to talk about things that really connect the the two of us together. So, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like the audience to know about your life, your career? What would you like people to keep an eye out for? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't know. I'm just excited to be getting out to a lot of cons. Like I said, I, I announced uh, a number of them. Um, and and there will be a lot more to follow. Uh, I've got, uh, again, uh, WeebCon down in Dallas on the 13th. Uh that weekend and then PoochieCon in Atlantic City, um, Suncoast Fan Fest, which is coming up close after that. There are a number of others that I will be um, that I'll be announcing as well. Um, Anime Fiesta down in South Texas. Uh, there's another in uh, Concord, Ichiban Con in Concord, North Carolina. Uh, yeah, a lot of cool cons that are coming up. So I'm excited to be going around to a bunch of places and hopefully I will be seeing people face to face 
at cons, and that'll be a lot of fun. Where will you be announcing these? Will it be on social media? Yeah, I'll be announcing them uh, between Twitter or Instagram, um, which is kind of how I'm most active right now before someone drags me onto TikTok. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting folks. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mark, for being on podcasts across worlds. And everybody who's been listening, thank you guys. Podcast Across Worlds is a show where we talk about anime and manga and other things we're interested in. And as you can see, we talk about a lot of things we're interested in and things we've been doing in our lives. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> Thanks and so much again. for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, it's been fabulous. And everybody else, keep reading manga, keep watching anime, and keep watch, um, listening or watching podcast across worlds. Thank you all for listening in and we'll see you on the next one. Later. Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there, and I will see you on the next video. This bump.